Just a friendly reminder before the video begins, you will hear two stories in this video and both have new updates. Now on to the first story. Caught my wife cheating with two men in our home, so I exposed her affair and ruined her career, now she's begging for forgiveness after I filed for divorce. Hello, everyone. I'm 33M. Before I delve into my story, my question is, what would you do if you walked in on your wife, whom you trusted so much, making out with two men on your bed? The first time I met my wife, Tracy, 29F, was at the movies. I had gone to watch a newly released movie with my friends and she was there with her girls gang. We kicked things off that day. Soon, we started seeing each other. We dated for a year, and eventually married. What started as a mere friendship became one of my saddest love stories. At the beginning of our marriage, it felt like being married to Tracy was a blessing. We were happy together, and I did all I could as a man and her husband to support her dreams and push her to be more. And for the first two years, we had a good marriage. Tracy was also sweet, supportive, and smart. I'd love to say that she was everything I wanted in a woman. A great cook, a fantastic personality, an elegant person, and she was truthful. If there was anything I loved in her the most, it was her truthfulness. While Tracy worked in a fast food restaurant, I was a graphic designer and worked with the organization that printed banners, billboards design, etc. We both earned a decent amount of money, but I did most of the spending at home because Tracy used her money to pursue her passion. Before Tracy and I married, she told me being an actress was her childhood dream, but she never got the opportunity to do what she loved because her parents did not support her dreams. Her parents insisted she study something else in college because being an actress was not as noble as she saw it. When Tracy told me about her lifelong dream and her interest in still becoming an actress, if it was okay by me, I told her it was fine. For someone who didn't pursue the profession I loved, I knew what it felt like to be passionate about something and not do it. So, I supported Tracy in signing up for drama clubs, volunteer roles, and other acting roles that pushed her closer to her passion and dreams. Also, we planned that she would go to a theater art academy in the years to come once we had enough money saved. Another reason I supported Tracy to pursue her career as an actress was because she was naturally talented in acting. Aside from being an annoying drama queen, she was so good at acting, and before I met her, she had taken a couple of courses and watched about a thousand videos on YouTube. Doing all of these things showed how serious she was, and I didn't want to be the one who would stop her dreams. We paused on having kids because of our plans for Tracy and her academy. We planned to start having children after she graduated from the academy. At least, I believed she would land good roles in plays, dramas, or even movie roles by that time. Even think that it was I who kept encouraging her to volunteer for dramas, plays, and other roles because she could land big roles by showing people how good and talented she was. I did everything because I wanted the best for her, and I wanted her to be successful. When Tracy asked if I was cool with her pursuing her passion as an actress, we were still in the first year of our marriage, and by that time, everything was still lovey-dovey between us. We never fought or had any serious arguments. She was like a sweet peach who respected and treated me with love. For that first year, Tracy kept applying for different volunteer roles online but couldn't get anything. There was a time when she even got tired of applying because she wasn't getting any response. She decided to focus on her new job, but I kept encouraging her not to give up. Luckily, months after we celebrated our first anniversary, she got a response from one of her applications. It was a play, and they wanted a couple of new actors and actresses. Tracy was over the moon when she got the mail, and I was so happy for her. The good thing was that the screening was held in the same town we lived in, so she had enough time to prepare. When D-Day came, Tracy passed her screening, and she was selected. She was so happy when she broke the news. Another good news was that they would pay them for their time, too, and their rehearsals for the play were mainly on Saturdays and Sundays. I didn't know or expect Tracy to change entirely once she started rehearsals. The first few weeks of her rehearsals, nothing changed between us. Our communication was still excellent, and we did everything we used to do. The only difference was that we spent less time on weekends than before. The rehearsal occupied her weekends because she would wake up in the morning, clean the house, cook, leave for rehearsals, and return in the evening. Even though I wasn't comfortable with the new development, I couldn't voice it out because I didn't want to blow her first official opportunity. Besides, her weekend compensation was greater than what she earned the entire week. As weeks passed, Tracy and I started to become distant. To keep myself busy, I started playing video games, hanging out with some friends, or inviting them over to my house. My friends were people I had known since high school and college, so I trusted and listened to them. When I told them about Tracy's passion for acting and her gig that took her time, one of my friends, Eric, told me to monitor Tracy closely because there were rumors of women sleeping with their directors to land good roles. But I discarded his advice and assured them that Tracy wasn't like that and didn't sleep with anybody to get the role because she was very talented. Stupid me, yeah. With my response, they didn't talk about her again. 
They only advised me to monitor her closely because new actors and actresses like Tracy had a high infidelity rate. I didn't take their words to heart because I was 100% sure at that time that Tracy wouldn't do anything to hurt me or ruin her happy marriage. But despite not taking their words to heart, it still remained in my head and subconsciously, I found myself being weird about Tracy and asking her weird questions. When Tracy noticed how different I had become, she complained about the questions I asked her and how I had been treating her, so I was forced to apologize and tell her what my friend said. After I told Tracy everything, she just laughed and said she couldn't cheat on me because she loved me so much, and in her words, you're the best husband in the world, and only a foolish and ungrateful woman would cheat on you. When she said that, I had inner peace knowing that Tracy wouldn't cheat on me. I wish. I didn't know she was only doing what she knew to do best, acting and that she had been cheating on me even before we had that conversation. Tracy changed so much in the following weeks in a way I can't even describe. Our conversation started feeling forced, and that excitement she had whenever she returned home disappeared. Before she changed, Tracy was literally a parrot. She would come home and tell me about everything that happened during their rehearsals. Even though I had never been to their rehearsals, I knew all the names of everyone who rehearsed with her, how they looked, and their different personalities. This was because Tracy told me everything about them. We were that close, and I always looked forward to her updates every weekend, but everything stopped. In addition to her withdrawal, Tracy started being defensive. She took offense to almost everything I said, even with old jokes that used to crack her up before. She started feeling like I was attacking her with my jokes or I referred to her in most things I said. Then, she upgraded her wardrobe. She had dresses she wore specifically on their rehearsal days, and they were pretty exposing. I complained about her outfit several times, but she didn't listen. She said they were the clothes in vogue and I was old school. While she did all these, I thought she was only trying to keep up with the other actresses who dressed better than her. I knew she was competitive fashion-wise, so the last thing that crossed my mind was her cheating. I started getting suspicious when she would change her hairstyle every week and was always on the phone talking with a man she claimed she was acting with. One day, she did something that really pissed me off, and when I voiced out my anger, she yelled at me and walked out of me. It was the first time she did something like that, and I immediately knew I had to do something about it. Later that evening, I talked to my friends when they came over, and they bet that Tracy was already cheating on me. Even with all the signs and changes I had seen, I couldn't believe Tracy was cheating on me because I made a lot of sacrifices for her to get to the level she was. I argued with them that maybe Tracy was having a tough time, and she was taking out the frustration on me. They insisted that I was blinded by love and that I should hire a private investigator if I wanted to find out if Tracy was cheating on me. I didn't like the idea of someone following Tracy around, but I subscribed to it because of her change in attitude. The following week, I found a private investigator online and hired him to follow Tracy for a week. On the third day of the week when the pie was following her, Tracy did not come home after her rehearsals. The following day, when she returned home, she said she went to a club for one of her fellow actresses' birthday parties. She had to crash with them at a nearby hotel because she thought it was safer than coming home from a far distance. The funny thing was, she didn't inform me about the birthday party, and I kept calling her phone until 3 a.m. when she picked up the call by 3 a.m. She said she didn't hear it ring because of the loud music in the background. Then she lied that she told me about the all-night birthday party, but I wasn't listening. I suspected she was lying, but I knew I would find out the truth because the pie was following her. For seven days, I didn't hear back from the pie, and by the time I heard back from him, I was out of town to visit my parents. I was on my way home when the pie informed me that he had some things to show me, so instead of driving home, I went to meet him at his location. Meanwhile, Tracy did not know I was coming home that day. We spoke the day before, which was Friday, and I told her I'd be coming home on Monday morning because I felt I would spend more time with my parents, but I ended up returning on Saturday. When I met my pie, he showed me things that shattered me and made me speechless. He had photos and videos of Tracy with a blonde guy, who turned out to be her affair partner. There were pictures of them making out in Tracy's car, AP's car, going shopping, eating out, and a video from the night Tracy told me she went to one of her fellow actress's birthday parties at a club and didn't hear the phone ring. Through that video, I found out that she was with him the entire night, they went clubbing together but left around 10 p.m., and they drove to his apartment, where she spent the rest of the night. So, it meant she had seen my calls but deliberately refused to take them. I was shocked that Tracy cheated on me. She looked like someone with whom I could build a promising future, but she blew that up. So, after the pie showed me all those pictures and videos, he told me he followed Tracy that evening, too, and she was currently with her affair partner in my home before he left to call me. At that moment, I was so full of rage, and I wanted to break things. I was too angry to drive, so my pie drove me to my house. When we got there, I met a blue Toyota Venza parked in my driveway, and I instantly recognized the car. It was the exact car I saw in the pictures and videos, and I instantly knew Tracy was in there with her affair partner. 
My pie opted to follow me, but I don't recall whether I agreed. The next thing I knew, I was in the house, and as I opened our bedroom door, I met Tracy and two men in the act in their positions. The tall blonde guy was on top of Tracy, and the other man was sucking her down. I was wild with anger and didn't know which of the men to attack first. Tracy wore one of those slutish netty lingerie, and her two hands were cuffed to the bed. She tried to get up when she saw me, but her movement was restricted. I attacked the blonde guy while the other man picked up his clothes and scurried away like a rat. Thankfully, my pie had come in with me, and he stopped me from committing murder. While all this happened, Tracy was still cuffed to the bed and already started begging me. She said I was mistaken and was only rehearsing her role for the play with the men. Hearing her stupid excuse enraged me, and I felt like choking her in that vulnerable position, but I left the room and told her to be out of my house by the time I returned. After I left the house with my PL. He told me that he had recorded everything and shared the video with me. I didn't know what to do with the video, but I still took it from him. That night, I crashed at one of my friend's places. I was so embarrassed that he was right about Tracy and her new acting career. What was even more heartbreaking was Tracy having a threesome in our room and in our bed. When I got home the next morning, Tracy was still in the house. She didn't go to her rehearsals because she knew she had messed up. When I met her at home, my anger escalated, and I kicked her out of the house and threw her stuff on the lawn. While she begged me, she kept saying that I was making a mistake and I should let her explain what really happened. She stayed outside for almost an hour, shouting my name and pleading that I let her in. But after acting like she was remorseful, she became abusive, called me names, and left afterward. This happened last week, and I finally dared to share it here because I have not been myself since the day I caught Tracy with those two guys. I don't know how all of this happened right under my nose. I wasn't a simp that overpampered Tracy or anything. We shared the bills, she did most of the chores, and I always controlled my emotions around her. I'm saying this because I've seen stories where most men ignore the red flags. Now that I think of it, I should have started my investigation from the moment our communication dropped and she upgraded her wardrobe. But is that how marriage is meant to be? Suspect your spouse when he or she gets new clothes or stops talking to you like they used to because they are always tired when they return from work. I don't think so. The most annoying thing is that she has been calling my phone nonstop since I kicked her out. I have been thinking of the perfect revenge and want to show the video I got to her director. Update 1, hello everyone. Thank you for your comments. I'm glad you all don't think it's too extreme. So, someone commented that I did a little investigation on the second guy in the video, and I did. Guess what, guys? I discovered he's bi and is currently in a relationship with Tracy's director. Tracy's director is homosexual, and I can imagine how angry and betrayed he will feel when he finds out that Tracy seduced his boyfriend. Speaking of Tracy, she showed up at my place three days ago. She looked so miserable, and her eyelids were swollen from crying. Unfortunately for her, my friends were at home when she came to beg me. Although they didn't say anything to her, their body language and eye rolls annoyed Tracy. She got so annoyed to see me hanging out with my friends while abandoning her that she yelled at me, so this is it, Mike? You let your friends disrespect your wife like this because of a small disagreement between us? The whole time Tracy was pleading with me on the porch, I didn't say or do anything. I was inside the house listening to her, but when she shamelessly made that statement, I charged out of the house to give her the hearings of her life, but my friend stopped me. At that moment, I was ready to be arrested for assault and wanted to be worthy of the charge. Before she left my house that day, she made a scene. She started talking about all the promises we had made to each other, and how I promised to grow old with her. I was so angry, but I couldn't do anything even if I wanted to. After waiting for a while and she didn't get any response from me, she asked about the theater art academy that I promised to support her. I wanted to go out and tell her to go to her affair partners for support. But I wanted her to stop talking and leave already, so I didn't respond. After waiting for a while, she eventually left in shame. I have already contacted a divorce lawyer, and once the papers are ready, he will send them to her to sign. Concerning the revenge, I will do as you guys have said. I understand that showing the video to her director might not destroy her career, but it will ruin everything she has worked hard for months. Sending the video to her director has even made me more excited now that I know Tracy cheated on me with her director's boyfriend. Thank you, everyone. I will make another update soon. Update 2 Hey guys, I'm so excited to make this update because things became messier for Tracy than I expected. After I made the last update, it took me two weeks to search for her director online, and I found him. He is just someone starting out in the movie industry as a director, and so far, he has been making waves. So, Tracy's director and I fixed a day to meet each other, and he showed up. He was hooked on meeting me because I told him I had something to show him about his partner and one of his actors. When we met that day, I didn't waste time talking, we exchanged pleasantries, and I showed him the video of his boyfriend, the blonde guy, and Tracy. He was so disappointed and heartbroken that he cried there. No kidding. 
He told me he suspected his boyfriend was doing something with one of the cast members, but he wasn't sure because he never caught them. Also, he claimed his boyfriend had cheated on him once in the past, but he, the director, forgave him, his partner, because he pleaded it happened while he was under the influence of alcohol. Honestly, I wasn't so interested in what his boyfriend had done, I was more interested in what he would do to Tracy and her affair partner. When I asked him what he would do with them, he said he didn't think of anything yet. I told him it would be weak of him to let them go off the hook like that, especially after what Tracy did to him. To cut the story short, Tracy's director fired Tracy and her blonde affair partner, but I don't know if he broke up with his boyfriend after that. When Tracy was fired, I was glad to see her hard work scatter like dust in the wind. I wanted her to feel the pain of putting her 100% into something, but it ended up being destroyed by someone else. By the time Tracy got fired, the divorce papers were ready, and my lawyer sent them to her. The day she got the papers, she called me and begged that I shouldn't ruin everything we suffered hard to build. I told her she ruined it the day she started nursing the thoughts of cheating on me. I told her I was the one who showed the video that ruined her months of hard work with her director. I knew she would flip when she heard that, and she did. She said she knew I was jealous of her and hated that she could pursue her passion, and I couldn't. I just laughed because I knew what she was trying to do, and I hung up the call. She signed the divorce papers two weeks ago, and I am making this update as a divorcee. Although it hurts, I'm glad she is no longer in my life. Thank you everyone for all your comments and support. Now on to the next story. Story 2. Me, 36M, found out my wife, 34F, has been cheating on me, don't know what to do. Let me start with some backstory. We've been together for almost 17 years, have three kids and old house we've been slowly restoring over the last two years and our budget is not the greatest, no savings and lots of debt. She's the only woman I've ever been with and before me, she had only a couple of one night stands, so we were both little experienced when we met. She's been the light of my life and we've gone through some difficult times together and always have we been there for another. I thought we were one of the few who managed to stay on course no matter what. Apparently I was wrong. With all that was going on, trying to fix the house, both working full-time, trying to make ends meet and to make sure the kids are doing fine, we kinda lost ourselves. The bad financial situation and health-related issues didn't help either. My wife had been trying to lose weight for a long time but nothing seemed to work for her and her self-esteem was down to the floor. We were both depressed, but instead of talking and consoling one another, we suffered in silence. I buried my nose in computer games to hide from our problems while she had her nose in her phone all the time. This spring and summer, things started going worse. She was spending more time with her friends and going partying, while I stayed at home with the kids. I thought that if I let her blow off some steam that she would come home in a better mood, but that didn't work at all. I tried to ignore the bad feeling that was starting to sink in my stomach. I had heard a rumor that she had been seen kissing some dude at a dance in a nearby town. I confronted her about it, but she denied and said that the guy had tried to kiss her, but she pushed him away. I was not fully convinced, but didn't want to push her too much as I was trying to let her see that I trusted her. Yet as the summer passed, I noticed she was getting way more protective and secretive about her phone. After seeing by chance what her FB password was one night in August 22nd, I decided to talk a look, to see if I could find anything about that dance earlier that summer. What I found was way worse. I saw that indeed she had been kissing some dude drunk as hell until her friend pulled her out of it, but that's nothing compared to what I saw next. I accessed her messenger and Skype. I found out that she had been chatting online with two foreign guys, A and B, for months. It had started on Instagram, some random dude, A, sent her some flattering messages and she started talking to him on Skype after that in early June. After only speaking to him for less than two weeks she started sharing with him nude photos after only resisting a bit. The incident with the guy she kissed happened later that month. She was chatting with this guy A up until midst of August, when he showed his real intention, he was a scammer with a stolen account and was just sending her pictures from that stolen profile. Yet she had been fooled enough to share with him pictures of her most intimate parts. She seemed like she was falling in love with him. By then she was already started to talk to Guy B, which also started on Instagram. Didn't take long for that to evolve to nude pictures and sexual talk. In both cases they were fantasizing about them coming to our country and meet with my wife at a hotel. She never spoke ill of me or anything like that, just talked about me like I was just there. If they asked, she said that I treated her well, but then she went on to tell them how she liked to talk to them and they made her feel good. The worst is yet to come. In one of the chats with a female friend of hers I found some more disturbing things. They went together to a two-day town festival in another nearby town in early July, stayed at a rented room, which I of course had agreed to and thought would be okay, and I knew that my wife's friend who has trouble with panic attacks had needed to stay overnight at the local hospital. But what I didn't know and saw in the chat between them was that she mentioned a 41-year-old guy from our own town, Guy C., a married man with kids, who was unhappy in his relationship and she had met him that night. 
He had come over to chat and had tried to go all the way but my wife told her friend that she had stopped him. She didn't mention the name, but I found out a likely suspect as our town is small and I also found in my online phone records that she had sent a message to a number belonging to a guy that fit the description. I feared the worst. I didn't let my wife know what I had found yet, as I was afraid what would happen while the kids were around, so I put up a mask and waited until Saturday 24th of August to confront my wife. I had called my mother and got her to take care of the kids. My wife is taking some classes to get some form of degree for her work and when she came home from class I asked her calmly to sit with me and I told her about what I knew. There was no violence, yelling or bad-mouthing. Just two sad people, one of them angry and hurt, and we talked the whole night. She promised that nothing had happened between her and C and what she had done online was only to try boosting her self-esteem a bit as she thought I had stopped loving her. She didn't exactly try to blame me for it, nor did she yell at me for snooping around. She said she thought I didn't like her anymore because she wasn't losing weight and when those guys started raining compliments on her she said she got addicted. She said she didn't mean to hurt me, she was selfish and tried to please them as she could so they would keep complimenting her, therefore sending them nude pictures. She told me that she saw it now that she had been cheating on me but she hadn't realized it while she was doing it, even though she knew she was doing something wrong. I wanted to believe her, I truly did. But I had concerns. We decided to try to fix our marriage and seek counseling. As the weeks passed, things seemed to be getting better. She's been way more affectionate to me and caring. Our sex life has been great and we've been spending way more time together than before. I still had a growing feeling in my stomach that she was hiding some critical information from me and after our second meeting with a marriage counselor last week, she finally admitted the truth. She admitted what I had suspected and feared but deeply hoped hadn't happened. She had indeed slept with C that night in July. And even though she said she had felt bad afterwards and shameful, she still kept talking to him via social media. She admitted to have met with him twice after that, but nothing more than a bit of kissing. She even tried to contact him again a few days after I had confronted her in August. My first response after that was simply freezing. I didn't yell or curse or anything. I didn't harm her in any way. I partly felt relieved that she had finally admitted what I suspected, but at the same time I felt humiliated and hurt beyond anything I've ever felt before. I didn't want to rush to anything so I haven't thrown the ring in her face yet, nor have I confronted the other guy, as I don't want to be the person to rat on him to his wife or make myself get arrested for assault. Besides, it wasn't him that broke my marriage contract, it was my wife. I don't know what to believe anymore. The woman I thought I knew would never do something like this. She's been trying to convince me that she was an idiot and selfish and whatnot and that she feels really bad about hurting me like that. She says she's ready to do anything to fix the situation and to get me to trust her again and feel like she's worthy again. Honestly I don't know if I'll ever trust her again or see her with the same eyes. I do love her of course and I like to be around her and see her smile. But at the same time it stings my heart. I want this to work because of the kids and our shitty financial situation, as we can't afford going through divorce, but I fear that I will lose myself and never gain any self-respect if I go through with this. How the hell can I forgive her for cheating on me with not only one guy but three? Well, four, if you count that one time she kissed a random guy. She was both emotionally as well as physically cheating with all of them for some period of time. Not just a one drunk night mistake, but some kind of emotional and sexual relationship with three guys for over two months. Doesn't matter if two of those relationships were online. She still planned to meet with them, knowing fully what would happen if they did. Has anyone here gone through anything similar to this and has some good advice? I know it's easy to say, just divorce her man and move on, but it's not that simple. I still have feelings for her and I don't know what will happen with our kids and our families. I also fear that if I dicorse her, which will mean that her family and friends will know the truth, that she will harm herself or at least be in a mental state where she will have bad influence on our kids. We also have an unfinished house and no savings and need at least to finish fixing it in order to get any cash out of selling it. Update, but after getting lots of great comments from you guys as well as talking with my closest friends, I got enough encouragement to gain some faith in myself. I finally opened my eyes to what I had thought deep down, that there was no chance in hell that I would ever gonna get over what my wife did, so I decided last Thursday to tell her I wanted to end this marriage. I think she knew it was coming as she didn't seem that surprised. She didn't even try to persuade me or anything. Just went like a broken record nothing I say will change anything whenever I asked her to say anything. There was lots of crying and she called in sick to work. We have since then been telling our closest friends and family about the incoming divorce, but she has been incredibly hesitant to admit what she did to her parents. My mother knows everything, but I for some reason agreed to not tell the in-laws about what happened yet. Maybe I'm afraid of a war between my soon-to-be ex-wife and me so I agreed to give her time to tell them. When we met them last Sunday we told them about the divorce but as we had to leave two of our kids with them for three days due to school holiday, it didn't feel like the right time to come clean about their daughter's multiple affairs. Instead we told them that there were some unsolvable disagreements, which felt really bad for me to say, 
because they seemed so disappointed. They have been part of my family for almost 17 years and I care about them, and they have been really supportive to us through the years, both financially and they love spending time with our kids. I felt really bad about lying to them, but I'm afraid that if I go and spill the beans, my soon-to-be ex-wife will become hostile and make the divorce process that much harder. But my patience is not limitless. I will tell them eventually if my wife doesn't come clean soon. I don't want the real reasons for the divorce to go public either, as we live in a small society and the truth would eventually find its way to my kids and they might get picked on because of it. I'd rather for the truth to remain with our closest friends and family, while the official explanation would be that we divorced due to growing apart, wanting different things etc. I also don't want to be known as the poor guy who had his wife ported by another guy. Now there are some big loose ends to tie. We need to sell our house and find apartments for ourselves. The custody will be shared where I will have the kids for a week and their mother for the other week. I also feel like their legal address should be with me, so I won't have to pay her child support. Would be unfair after what she did. I have no idea how this will end, but often in my country, the mother tends to get what she wants, as everyone always feels sorry for them. I will fight for my kids though.